morning, everyone. Another glorious summer's day. Um, there's not a lot other than what was in the notice sheet. I'll just emphasize one thing. Sober is presenting his thoughts on his sabbatical tour to Sri Lanka and India tomorrow, 7.30 at Woos Hill. Um, Liz and I are going with a couple of spaces in the car, so talk to me afterwards if you need a lift. And then uh, once those places are full, we'll find somebody else that's going. Um, I think it could be quite uh, quite good. We've been looking forward to hearing how he got on, and we got snippets, but I don't think we got much detail. So uh, that's tomorrow evening. Yes. Right, so I will hand over to Mary. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Am I on? Okay, I'll start again. Yeah. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is God who made us, not we ourselves. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God and praise God's name. For the Lord is good and God's love endures forever. God's faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. And we sing hymn number 20. Please be seated. So we turn to our prayers. Eternal one, we come this morning to worship. We come to join in fellowship. We come to learn. And as we come, we bring with us our lives. Each one of us different. For some coming both physically present here in the building or online, is difficult. We struggle. For others, To come is pure joy. For some, attending worship is a habit, something that we always do. For others,
It's new. Or different every time. So Lord, as we come, we bring our lives. Each one different. But joined together in fellowship with you. We lift those lives and the life of this church in worship and praise and thanksgiving. We know that we're not perfect. We're human beings with human flaws. And so, Lord, we also bring those parts of our lives that we are not so proud of. We acknowledge them before you. We ask your help to change. Knowing that you are a God of compassion, of love, of forgiveness. And that you reach out to us to lift us. So, Lord, as we come this morning, we come as we truly are. as the individuals we truly are and as the church we truly are. And we pray for your uplifting. In Jesus' name, amen. I've moved the Lord's Prayer, Joe. We're going to sing number 469. <clears throat> the first Bible reading is from Isaiah, and you can find that on page 706 if you want to follow it. It's Isaiah 58, verses 1 to 14, and it's entitled True Fasting. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions, 
and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarrelling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen, only a day for people to humble themselves? It is only for bowing one's head like a reed and for laying in sackcloth and ashes. Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? It is not to share your food with, is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. For you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk. And if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath, and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honourable, and if you honour it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord and will cease, and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast in the inheritance of your father Jacob. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The second reading is from Matthew on page 941. Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. And it's entitled The Sheep and the Goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. 
I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was ill and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or ill or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did did not do for one of these of the least you did not do for me. Then they will go away in eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Thanks be to God for his word. that I struggled to choose the readings for this morning. The problem was there were so many I could have chosen. Which ones did I want to focus on? Part of the human condition seems to be believing that God has to be appeased. Make the right sacrifices, sing the right words, say the right words, and God will give us what we want. The prophets literally scream, no, to that idea. And looking through the Bible for readings, I came across Jacob, and I was reminded of Jacob's story. Jacob is promised an inheritance by God. He's promised so much. And what does he do? He spends his life scheming and plotting to make that inheritance come true. It was offered as a gift, but somehow he believes that he's got to trick his way into it. And it all culminates with a big wrestling match during the night with God. In the reading from Isaiah, the people are praying and fasting. But their lives are not godlike. They say to God, We have fought. Why have we fasted when you've not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves if you're going to ignore us? Our fasting ends in quarreling and strife. And if you've fasted without a purpose, you'll understand that. You get bad-tempered. And Isaiah says, no, you, you can't fast physically if you're not also fasting in the rest of your life. The fasting God wants is justice, shelter for the wanderer. clothes for the naked. That's the fasting I want, he says. So 
So I, I could have chosen any one of the prophets. The message is the same. Our worship, our words must be in line with our actions or our actions must be in line with our worship and our words is probably the right way to put it. Jesus is a big advocate of prayer and fasting. He practices it himself. And when the disciples don't succeed in a healing, he points out that they haven't prepared. They haven't prayed and fasted. But in our reading, he says the final judgment will be on how that prayer and fasting shows itself in our lives. How our worship shows itself. What did we do about the injustice in our world? What did we do about the prisoner, the orphan, the widow? It's very tempting always to think that the problems that we face now are new. So when we go back to Isaiah and find that they're still having the same debate. When I was a teenager, it was social gospel and spiritual gospel and the two were deemed to be opposites. There were accusations against each other. People who followed the social gospel of action were trying to earn their way into the kingdom, it was said. And on the other side, people who followed the spiritual gospel were so spiritually minded they were no earthly use, it was said. And there are echoes of similar arguments in the church today. But the truth is, it's not either or. Jesus, the prophets, John, Paul, Peter, they all say, the God you worship is shown in the fruit your life bears. So if you worship status, money, and any other, uh, other number of things, if you worship them, it will show the fruit in your life. If you worship a God of compassion and love and wholeness and holiness, that will also show in your life. And at the end of the day, by our fruit, the true source of our worship is known. Amen. As we turn towards our intercessions, we sing number 693, Beauty for Brokenness.
So we turn to our prayers of intercession. Oh, no, before we do, this week is Refugee Week. So our prayers of intercession will focus on refugees, and we're a very international congregation. So what I wanted to do was to ask you which refugees are most on your heart today? There are refugees all across the world, and there just seem to be more and more. So which refugees are most on your heart today? The ones from Uganda, yeah. Sudan, Ukraine, Al Adam, Myanmar, yes. Afghanistan, Syria, yeah. Haiti. Okay, so as we pray, let's hold all those people in our hearts. Loving one, we come now in prayer for our world. We lift to you the refugees across the world. We lift the situations from which they are escaping. The wars, the oppression, natural disasters, we lift to you those who have the power to make decisions about the future. We lift to you those in the camps who have the skills and the knowledge but lack the equipment and the facilities to make life better. We lift to you the agencies who are trying to help. Surround them all with your love. Uphold them with your strength. Give them, give them wisdom and understanding. We 
your healing and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And we pray for our own Methodist Development and Relief Agency all we can. As they seek not to impose outside values, but to help those with knowledge and skills. Help them to truly be your voice, your hands, your feet in that place. And we bring our prayers for all those known to us who are in need at this time. Those who are not well, in body or in mind. Those who are anxious about money, about food. those who are anxious about families. May they too know your love surrounding them, your strength upholding them, and your peace and healing in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. We join all our prayers this morning together in the Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, ah, we have some offering. with our neighbours and through other charities. Pray that all may be used for the furthering of your kingdom and the building of your world. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to close with one of the great hymns of hope. I can to keep us from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy 
to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forever. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with each one of us this day through the coming week and forever. Amen.